Hi, I'm Schmanz. Or if you're as talented as Corey, you can try to call me Amitai Schleier. I recommend Schmanz. I'm going to talk to you about developing classical music. Here is an example of some classical music that I developed. It's notes and markings and pages. Oh my. There we go. So, uh, based on the title, you might think that I'm going to talk about how programming and composing are really similar. Uh, they sort of are, but it's, it turns out not to be that useful. So the first idea here is that composing is like programming. Maybe in some ways, like if I wanted to get really hand wavy, it's a creative endeavor, I'm generating ideas based on my experience and intuition, there's a result at the end that I hope is coherent at the, at the large level and the small level. Uh, but that doesn't help me do either programming or composing any differently, to talk about it like that. Uh, a lot of things are like a lot of other things. It's not always useful. Uh, if you don't believe me, you can Google Fischmann's theorem, which uh, is not actually a theorem, but it is by me. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> uh, composing like programming turns out for me not to be a very useful idea. How about programming helps me with composing? That is probably true in some ways. For certain people, for instance, if you're making electronic music, it's very helpful to have computers that can generate and superimpose waveforms, do whatever effects you want, uh, multiple tracks, you know, all this stuff that's been around for a while. Uh, that's not actually what I am trying to make when I make music, so for me that doesn't help. <clears throat> uh, what I learned in college when I went to college the second time and finally graduated was a music major, and we learned in our composition classes about music theory, uh, harmony, counterpoint, form, and there, there are sets of rules that define when you have multiple notes at the same time, if you're trying to adhere to these rules, then you have to do certain things. And they're more heuristics than algorithmic, but you could conceivably get a computer to help you with that. I've heard of, you know, consuming an oeuvre of Bach inputs and producing Bach-like outputs by software. But that's not what I want to do. Uh, because there are other rules in my head when I'm composing music that I don't know exactly what they are. I just know that I have the intuition, just like with software development, actually. Uh, and then the other problem for me with involving programming in my composing is that when there's a glowing rectangle that I can see, I get a little bit stupid. And if I'm going to write music that's worthwhile, I need to not be a little bit stupid as much as possible. So again, for me, this idea that programming helps with composing, nothing actionable for me in there. So the piece that I scrolled through at the beginning very quickly is what I would call a minimum viable piece. Uh, it was my first serious composition. I wrote it my junior year in college. Uh, it's kind of old school. It tries to follow sonata form roughly, even though it's very short. Uh, it has a fugue-like section in the middle, uh, and I tried to follow the rules of counterpoint as applied to the piano keyboard as best as I understood them. Uh, it took me about 75 hours to develop that four pages of music. Uh, it took about three or four for the pianist to practice and learn it, uh, and we had a little bit of QA at that point. Uh, and then deployment for the production pianist took all of three and a half minutes. So uh, what about the idea that programmer tools help me ship music? For me, this is actually true. This is the first idea so far that is actually helpful. Uh, tools that I use, LilyPond provides a domain-specific language for notating music. Uh, you can write it in a text editor, and I do. That's what Vim is for. Uh, you can write it very quickly and diff it and store it in Git, everything you normally do with code. Uh, it renders to PDF, it renders to MIDI. So you can hook it into your workflow and act like a programmer while you're working on it with all the benefits that that entails. Thinking like a programmer helps me ship music. This is also true. Uh, there are a few things that I do as a programmer, all, all have to do with feedback. The, the, the faster I can learn what I'm doing and whether it's what I meant and whether I like it, the better. Uh, in the case of LilyPond, LilyPond is kind of like a compiler. So if I can get it to give me more precise error messages by turning up the warnings and using it in a certain way, then when I have a mistake, I can see more quickly what it is. Uh, likewise, I can make fewer intuitive mistakes if I lay out my musical code in a consistent way. Uh, for instance, if I have a treble voice and a bass voice, split screen, line them up next to each other and make sure that the lines correspond to each other. Uh, 
And finally, I can render to MIDI and listen to it and see if it sounds like what I thought it was going to sound like. Almost there. Uh, programming practices help me ship music. I sure wish this was true. It's not. Uh, if it takes me 21.5 hours to make one minute of music, uh, that is nowhere near the level of expertise that I have in software development. Uh, I'm, I'm a beginner at composing. That's part of it. And the, the feedback loops that I've figured out so far in the music world are much bigger than the ones that I've figured out in the software world. So that may be repeating myself to say that I'm a beginner and that the feedback loops are large. But that's, that's the problem I'm facing here. So if you'd like a beer, show me how to apply outside in TDD to writing music. I'll be very grateful. Uh, and I bet cognitive science would find that very interesting as well. Thank you.